All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This is the State of Apple on CentOS uh, talk. I'm Troy Dawson. Uh, I'm the Apple Steering Committee Chair. Carl, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Carl George. I am an engineer in the Community Platform Engineering Team here at Red Hat and uh, working primarily on Apple. Thank you very much. Uh, we like to, well, that's the wrong button. We like to start off with uh, some metrics. Uh, we'll start with these. I get my slides from Matt, uh, Fedora, Matt Miller. Matt Miller uh, uses Velociraptor. Uh, Velociraptor is just, is the old way of doing the counting. All it does is the finds the unique IP addresses downloading from, from Fedora. So these aren't all that accurate. Anyway, but it's a fun thing to look at. Uh, we see the Apple 8 had this spike up there that went down and went up. Uh, Apple 7, you know what, let's look at the next one. It's fun to see that we had over 5 million things and we're up to four and a half. The next one shows <laughs> the Apple 7 spike. Uh, we believe this spike to be Apple 8. <laughs> excuse me, Apple 8 machines using the Apple 7 repo. I guess there are some machines there because the spike and drop correspond with the CentOS uh, 8 end of life drop. So we see this drop going back up. Um, another fun thing on this is the Apple 9 from this count, this is the unique IP addresses, is up to 12,150, we'll say that. Uh, all right, this is just a fun one to look at. Anything else on this one you wanted to notice, Carl? Because I think you have better numbers than this. Sure. Just a reminder for everyone that, uh, you know, these are the unique IP address method, which is, uh, it is vulnerable to both over and under counting simultaneously uh, because of, <laughs> Um, you know, between people doing local mirrors and NAT systems, uh, it's just it's just not a very reliable. But it was the only thing we had for a long time, um, and we'll use that as a segue to introduce uh, the new stuff we use, which is using DNF Count Me. It's something that Fedora introduced in its own Fedora's Mirror Manager infrastructure, which Apple shares, and that allows us to uh, systems actually um, they're not a unique identifiers, but they basically um, I think once a week include a flag in their repo request to the mirror manager that says, hey, count me, I'm a real system. Um, and it'll also include how long that system's existed for so we can help put things into buckets like things that are less than a week old. Those are probably, you know, containers and CI systems, uh, things that are older than a week. Uh, we've made charts based on that, uh, that cutoff, so only systems that are older than a week so we can look at real systems, not just CI systems. We can go ahead and go on to the next slide, I think. Oh, I already did go to the next thing. Oh, sorry, I'm, look, it, so I'm I... looking at my uh, <laughs> I'm looking at my <laughs> wrong screen. I was looking at my copy here, local. Uh, yes, that's okay. So, you were you were talking to the slide, so perfect. It was good. Uh, so this first slide, uh, we're looking at Apple Nine. That's our you know our new and shiny that we've got out. Uh, nice nice trajectory there for CentOS Stream, uh, rocketing up. Uh, obviously, that came out first and. These other distribution, the other nine distributions, RHEL and Alma Linux, they they came out afterwards, and uh, they're pick, they're you know they're just getting started. They'll pick up steam. Uh, Stream, CentOS has a nice little head start here, uh, but we'll see how that shakes out in the future as uh, as more more people migrate to major version nine and uh, start using Apple nine. I think we're ready for the next one. So this is uh, this is a new new slide. This is out of band from what we've done before, and. Uh, what I wanted to show here was that for the first time ever, we actually have count me stats for both the operating system and for Apple separately. So we can actually compare and see kind of roughly what percentage of systems have Apple enabled. Uh, we don't have that for RHEL or uh, any of the other distributions yet. Alma, Alma recently started doing you know, DNF count me. And I'm talking in talks with them right now. I was trying to get some slides included with this, but I haven't finished up the charts for it yet. So maybe the next time we give this talk, I'll actually be able to show percentages of Apple as well that are 
percentages of all Linux that have Apple enabled as well. What's surprising me is that for CentOS Stream 9, uh, it's a lot fewer systems with Apple enabled than I thought. Uh, so while we've got the uh, over 7,000 CentOS Stream 9 systems with Apple, um, the uh, CentOS Stream itself, it's up over 20,000 systems already. Um, we've been hanging out. Uh, you see the, the arc of these lines here. Uh, we've been hanging out at around 33 to 36% since April. Um, Earlier on, it was a lower percentage and it's been increasing since then. Uh, taking a look at some of the Alma data and comparing uh, so far, like I said, I don't have the charts ready for it yet, but for Alma Linux 8, uh, almost 100% of those systems have Apple enabled uh, based on these mm -hmm. type of metrics. So I'm expecting this you know, 33% to grow significantly later on in the life cycle. Yeah. And just want to point out these are older than one week so it's not yes. just throw away test systems they still might be test systems but it's not sure. throw away test systems yes this lags a little bit uh, i know matthew's trap for his uh for his charts that he creates he's he, he's working out a heuristic to kind of predict systems that are uh less than a week old but are expected to stay around and be older than a week um but it's not simple, <laughs> so uh, I'll have, okay. I, I, I still owe him some uh, some research on that to see if I can integrate these and we just start using the same chart, the same system to generate the charts. Um, for now, my my charts just lag lag behind uh, and don't have that don't have any brand new systems that are, you know, will be permanent systems but are behind uh, or but have only been around for a week or less. Okay. Next next slide. Yep. So here this we have uh, eight. Yeah, the first the first uh, first two slides, those were, first two charts, those were around uh, Apple nine. Uh, now we're going back to Apple eight, which is uh, orders of magnitude more systems. Um, the last I think the last time we gave this talk, we kind of we saw we were starting to see the dip for uh, classic CentOS eight systems uh, as they were you know having uh, as as that content got retired off the mirrors. And systems stop started failing to up, you know fetch updates uh, because of the or, the alphabetical uh, order of the repos. Apple Apple hits st dropped off entirely because the systems would fail to hit the AppStream repo, and then get, DNF would give up. So we saw a huge dip there, uh, but it has actually come back and grown since then, even more systems than were before, which is strange and troubling. But I mean. It's out there. It's open source. We can't stop anyone from using it. Um, I suspect that a lot of people just changed over their changed over their systems to the uh, the vault mirrors and just left good enough alone, um, which is not recommended. They're running unpatched, and they should switch to either CentOS Stream or RHEL or one of the RHEL rebuilds. Just switch to something that's getting updates still. Um, still drastically the highest uh, highest uh, count of things hitting Apple. Um, the next chart is your, these are smaller lines are a little harder to read. So the next chart actually breaks those out uh, into, it takes off CentOS Linux off of the chart. So that way these can uh, have a little room to breathe and you, we can see how they're, they're, they're trending. Uh, we can see here that uh, interestingly, CentOS Stream 8 systems have uh, surpassed Rel 8 systems as far as um, the ones that are contacting Apple. So that's interesting to see. Um, there's no, not really a way to tell, you know, how many, uh, at least publicly, how to, how, how to tell how many stream eight systems there are and how many rel eight systems there are. We don't have that data. So um, I, if the pattern holds from what I've, what I've seen early with the Alma no, count me numbers, uh, nearly a hundred percent of those systems have Apple. So I would, sus I would suspect it's probably, you know, 80 to a hundred percent of those systems have Apple uh, for all of these eight distributions. And so these numbers are still pretty fairly well represented, uh, well representative of it. We can see some of the other rebuilds in here that are also continuing to grow. It seems like Oracle's getting a little bit of a dip here, and I don't know what that that's about. It might just be up and down. As you can see, these lines kind of waver up and down. Uh, interestingly, sometimes you can see where all the distributions dip down at the same time. That's usually indicative of a, a infrastructure problem where we weren't counting for some period of time and undercounted. Uh, like you can see that looks like in uh, middle of May 2021, there was a dip on all of the lines in the chart at the same time. Yep. Ready for the next one? Sure. Let's go ahead and go. 
Oh, these are the smaller ones. Yes. So in the in the previous chart, the very bottom line was Cloud Linux, which it's not a real rebuild exactly, but it's a real derivative. Um, they uh, they also enable Apple on their systems. There, I guess they consider themselves compatible enough that that's a common thing to do. They're the next most common. And then we've got uh, two other distributions that I have only ever heard of in the context of these count me statistics. I've never heard of anyone using them. Uh, I think they're more popular in Asia, um, Miracle Linux and Analysis OS. Um, but they're all they're there under under a thousand systems so far. I, somebody in the comment, Miracle <laughs> Linux is one word away from being beefy miracle. <laughs> Beefy Miracle Next Linux, thing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> if we reduce the scale a little further, uh, we can see some of these charts, some of these uh, systems that are uh, a little bit smaller usage. Um, I know Springdale is one that's commonly referred to and, and uh, has a long history. Um, still doesn't seem to have much adoption. Then there's uh, a few other competitors in there that are coming up and uh, we wish them all well and hope they, uh, they are prosperous and uh, make their users happy. Okay, this is one uh, from Matt's slides. Uh, we talked about uh, empirical or basically throw, I call them throwaway machines because empirical is really hard for me to say. Um, ephemeral? One of, I, ephemeral, yeah, it's so hard I don't even <laughs> say <one>. it right. <laughs> uh, I've been showing this slide uh, well, basically since we've been doing this. And it's really interesting to note the change. Uh, we see the drip when CentOS uh, drop, when CentOS Linux got uh, end of life and taken off the mirrors. And it's really interesting for me to note, you know, I'll highlight with my mouse, that the, I'm calling them throwaway machines, didn't come back. Instead, we had filled with the, the longer term machines. I don't know why at this point, I can't speculate, but uh, it's interesting to know. And then this is a simple Apple eight versus Apple nine. And we do have Apple nine is high enough that it shows on this graph. I just wanted to, to highlight that. I I think that's all of our metrics. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to uh, what people really want to hear about. <laughs> well, actually, I think people really like the, the metrics. Um, what's happening and what's happened with Apple 9? Uh, Apple 9, I think the biggest thing is, well, first off, RHEL 9 was released. And Apple 9, this was the first time ever that an Apple release came out not only at the same time as the the rail release, but we had a very substantial, um, well, there's a lot of packages there. It was actually useful when, when rail nine came out. Um, you know, you, you've got numbers, Carl, do you mind sure. saying a few numbers about what? Are you asking for the numbers at the rail nine launch or the numbers now? I, have um, both, I just don't have the uh, at launch numbers in front of me right now. Let's just do the, the numbers now. Okay. People, it, it was it was useful then, yeah. and so we'll basic benchmark. That. There were there were more source RPMs in Apple Nine at the Rel Nine launch than there were in Rel Nine itself. So <laughs> that was a that was the useful benchmark that I was kind of hoping we would cross, and we did a couple of weeks before the actual Rel Nine launch. Um, so that was good to see. We're up to uh, 2,825 source packages in Apple 9 so far. Uh, cool. Obviously, that is source packages specifically. Binary packages, you know, what you actually install uh, on your system, that's at 6,362. So lots of things available there. It's, uh, it's great to see the growth. It's continuing to grow. And so far, uh, not directly corresponding to the number of uh, packages, but we've had 2,501 total Bodhi updates which is the total activity that'll that'll have some duplication. Some packages have had multiple Bodhi updates, you know, in the Apple nine lifecycle so far. So 
but that's a good indicator of the activity and uh, you know the maintainer interest in this release of it. Uh, one of the things, well, two things I wanted to comment on. One was uh, you and the team. It wasn't, I think it was more than just you. Might have even been Mohan. Successfully transitioned from we were building off the CentOS stream packages to Rail nine packages, real Rail nine packages, and nobody even noticed. It was yes. totally smooth. Thank you very I get, much. I give full credit to the uh, Fedora release in, uh, release engineering team. You know, Kevin and uh, Mohan, and uh, I was I was there for moral support. I didn't really do anything. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everyone who, who did that. That was that was that was wonderful. Yeah, that, uh, that the was other what thing... we planned to do. That's what we advertised, and uh, we were able to pull it off. And people were just able to keep targeting Apple Nine and keep doing their builds. Uh, I didn't hear. I didn't hear any reports of uh, packages, Apple Nine packages that were not able to install on Rel Nine uh, that had been built against CentOS Stream Nine. So we we were able to execute that correctly as we expected. Yep, there's still some missing some dependencies. We're still dealing with that, but yes, yes, that wasn't a build problem. Uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight, and this came after, well or around the same time. Uh, this was something that the committee talked about and that is dealing with uh, Apple 9 modules. Uh, it was decided that we will not have, at least for the time being, modules in Apple 9. This was discussed by the, the Apple steering committee uh, and we discussed a lot with the, the Rail Engine team, the Fedora Rail Engine team and well, we always say modules are hard, but uh, in this case, yeah, the benefit did not did not do the the work would not have been beneficial enough to uh, help us. And as a uh, as a reminder of that, we actually had a a modular Apple eight modular problem shortly <laughs> after we uh, after we made the decision to. At least for now, uh, you know, it can be revisited in the future, but at least for now, we're not going to do Apple 9 modular. Shortly after that, like a week or two, then we had some, we, there was a problem with Apple 8 modular where, um, actually it wasn't Apple 8 modular specifically. It was the modules from RHEL 8 that were getting put into the build route for all Apple 8 packages when they shouldn't have been. Uh, and it should have been just the default streams. All of them were getting put in there. And so that was a bug we had to sort out. Yep. Uh, the real Engine team, one of the things they said is, is it's, it might be hard to install it in the first place, but the, the ongoing work that the Apple 8 has been, Apple 8 modules has been, has, is really what uh, convinced us not to do it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to, to mention, uh, CentOS Stream 9, and that means Apple nine next goes end of life on 2027 june well basically three years from now so just keeping that in your minds uh it's not as bad as you guys are talking about the 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 time problem but uh it will be going anything else before we move on carl sounds like we covered it all okay Out oh, and now I moved too far. Apple eight. Um, not too much to say about Apple eight. Uh, I do have on my notes the Apple eight playground decommissioned. I think we said that last time. I should take that from the notes. Um, don't worry about playground. It's it's, it's gone. It's a distant memory. Um, one thing we've also noted is. Um, in the in the past, we've we've asked people that if you're missing a develop package, uh, to to ask Rail to put it in, and they've been putting a lot more in. Uh, when the Rail 8.6 release came out, there was a lot of uh, develop packages that came and got put into uh, Rail 8 CRB. That's code code ready builder doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what they named it. Um, so that's that's 
we've we have seen a growth in the Apple 8 repo since that's happened. And uh, thank you all to the Red Hat people that helped do that, as well as the people that filed those bugs and got them put in. Uh, anything else with Apple 8, Carl? That seems sort of anticlimactic. No, it's. Uh... I don't think there's much much other news there. It's just uh, you know all the attention's been on Apple Nine and getting new stuff added there. Apple H just kind of chugging along, and uh, you know maintainers are doing what they need to. Yep. Uh, yeah. One further note is CentOS Stream Eight and Apple Eight Next goes end of life in 2024, uh, June. Well, I'm, it's really May 31st. I'm just saying June. Uh, 2024. That's Two, wait a second. <laughs> what did I say for Just Apple 9? 2027, that's five years for the Apple 9. <laughs> Sorry, I got my numbers wrong. You can't tell that I studied math in college. Uh, <laughs> two years. <laughs> two years for uh, Apple 8 next. Now, that's not Apple 8. That's Apple 8 next. Okay. It, it will cease to be useful once uh, CentOS Stream reaches its end of life, which corresponds to the end of the RHEL full support cycle. Yep. Okay, Apple 7. Uh, so Apple 7 is actually still growing. I was surprised at that, uh, even though it's a fairly old thing. Uh, the only thing I have written down on my notes is that RHEL 7 goes end of life at 2024, June. That might sound like a familiar date because that's the same time that uh, Central Stream 8 goes away. So two years, uh, Apple 7 will be archived take and going away. <laughs> yeah, it'll two years in a month. So yeah, it'll take a little bit. Anything else I missed with Apple 7, Carl? I think that's it. It's uh, it's sticking around and it'll uh, still be useful for people. We know there's we know there's a long tail of people that that don't stay on the uh, the latest version of the OS. They they stick around on uh, on seven for a long time and uh, yeah, and we can see that a little bit here too with the uh, the number of packages uh, in this next slide here. Uh, packages and maintainers for the different Apple releases. Uh, granted, Apple Seven's been around the longest, so it's had the longest time to grow. Um, but I do think that also is indicative of, you know, the total number of users using it. Um, eventually we'll have it where all of the re Apple releases have uh, DNF count me metrics. So we can actually uh, compare them all and actually verify that, that, Hey, most of our users are on Apple seven or most of them are on Apple eight now. And we can uh, track the growth of that over time. Yep. And if people remember from our very first slide, we still have quite a few of Apple 6 users. We've archived it, and people have switched to the archive. Um, we don't recommend that, <laughs> but we keep the archive for if you do. Uh, one thing I wanted to notice on this, uh, for people who came to our last presentation, the Apple 9 thing, uh, so that was back in February. From February to now, we've grown from Apple 9 in February was 1,600. So we've gone by 1,200. And I put this one up mainly for the maintainers thing. So back in February, so the maintainers for Apple 7 and Apple 8 actually has gone up about 10 for, well, not 10 for 8, about 5 for Apple 7. But Apple 9, back in February, we had 121. And I was a little concerned at that point because the top 10 people had built a, a higher percentage than I'd like to see. But at this point, as you can see, we're at 243. Uh, we only have an average of 12 packages per maintainer. Back in February, that was at 14. Um, anyway, these are very good numbers, especially for... Apple 9 only being around for seven months. Anything else you want before I move on, Carl? I, I didn't hear you. Did you go mute? Yes. Uh, yes, it looks good. Okay. I temporarily muted locally. Okay. 
just wanted to highlight this. This is one of our most used pages. If you want a package into Apple, we have a process for requesting packages. We have it broken out for if you're just, uh, you don't package at all and you want a package in, how do you ask? If you are a packager and it's not your package, how to ask? And if you're a member of the Apple Packaging SIG. Anyway, uh, there is a procedure for requesting packages in Apple. And again, this is probably our most hit outside of the the in, the main index page. That's our most hit page. I share I share this link probably twice a week on average with people. Yep. So Apple and Red Hat, we have an interesting. Oh, oh, sorry. Trying to do my speaker notes and run. Carl, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about this. We we don't need to. I see in our speaker notes we have two things that. Uh, well, we can we can we can see them again, but let's just gloss over. Uh, Red Hat is 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 now since uh, the 2021 Red Hat Summit, Red Hat has uh, said that they appreciate Apple and are even going to do things. And as Carl said, uh, he is actually, one of his jobs is working on Apple. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's specifically a an Apple initiative within the CPE team. And uh, luckily I am, I am assigned to that and getting to work on that full time. Uh, uh, we're hoping to grow that headcount over time and have even more people working on it or or at the very least allow people within CPE to kind of rotate around and, uh, you know, pursue what's interesting to them and work on different things. Strangely, yeah. Troy actually isn't assigned to that initiative. But it's still, <laughs> uh, uh, it, it being a CPE initiative is kind of a, kind of a blanket like, you know, you, you can spend yeah. at least some portion of your workday on this. Yes, I used to say before this happened, I used to say uh, Red Hat doesn't pay me to work on it. But now actually in my status reports and uh, during the work time, uh, when I don't have other things, I work on Apple, which is which is nice. I have really appreciated that. Um, one other thing that we wanted to bring up, and this is fairly recent. Uh, there was a discussion about the uh, Code Ready Builder repo. And we were told, and this was in the Apple thing, that if there is a package in Code Ready Builder that is a run, you feel is a runtime package and you have packages that do it, uh, go ahead and ask, open a Bugzilla and ask for that package to be put in. Uh, an example for, I, I do the KDE stuff. For the KDE, there's a proto, oh my goodness. <laughs> a protolib qt5 that was in crb but we really can't install kde without this package uh and i put in a request and it probably will not happen until rel 8.7 and rel 9.1 but it's actually progressed and got all of its tags and it looks like it's going to go in so red hat is continuing to make Apple's life better. Uh, I'm not going to say it's perfect, but uh, it's it's great. We appreciate everybody in Red Hat who's been doing that. Uh, there's been a lot of people behind the scenes at Red Hat that have been pushing uh, to get each of these steps um, implemented. Uh, anything else, Carl? Mm -hmm. Did uh, did you want to talk any more about why the uh, the CRB runtime thing about that? What we're looking working on with that problem? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> I guess uh, I just not, I just realized we're we're already uh, just past our time for the talk. So let's. Uh, I guess we started oh, a few oh. minutes late though, so we're we should wrap up. But I guess short version is is that. Uh, uh, the Apple setup instructions include enabling CRB, but it's still a very commonly missed step. Um, CRB in general is kind of intended to be for kind of build time requirements, but there are packages in there um, due to various support things that 
get put in there that are often runtime requirements for Apple packages. So in our setup steps, we say to enable it. Uh, when it's missed, you may run into a, a, problem, a situation where an Apple package won't install. And the only error you have is that, uh, you know, there's some kind of dependency problem that there's something missing. And it's not immediately obvious that the answer is to enable CRB. Um, the, the, we've been talking about possibly enabling CRB, but it looks like we're kind of leaning away from en en enabling CRB by default whenever Apple release is installed. But we're kind of leaning away from that solution uh, just because of the nature of CRB and it being, uh, at least in real unsupported content, uh, a better, more holistic solution for the long term is when we run into one of those Apple runtime requirements that's in CRB, asking RHEL if they can promote it from CRB into AppStream so that way the P Apple package can install even if CRB has been forgotten about and le left disabled. Yep. Um, I'm going to run through. There's only two slides left. Uh, we got some new packages. OpenVPN, a lot of people have asked for that. XFCE is currently in Apple uh, 9 testing. These are for, I should say, 9, Apple 9. They yes, were already they are both 9 specific. So those two are coming. It, it, people are excited about that. Um, and then question and answers. We will have our slides. Uh, that's weird. Why? Is, why? <laughs> got a little mouse there. Um, we will have our slides up. Uh, so we do have references to the various things. Do we have time for question and answers, or did we go over? We're in the break time. We're in the break. Time. Yeah, I think I'm it's sorry. fine if you're. Q&A goes in, as long as we don't run into uh, the next talk. So I think we have time for a few questions. Okay. I don't see anything uh, in the Q&A tab, but there is one in the in the main chat. Any words on KDE and XFCE, Apple 8 and Apple 9? XFCE is coming into Apple 9. KDE is actually in Apple 8 and Apple 9. Uh, they, they get updated once a year so at rail 8.7 and 9.1 both the kde will be updated for both 8 and 9 that will probably be the last update for 8 because of all the other library issues are having problems uh, 9 will try to keep going uh, again with once a year major updates uh, anything else we might currently implement so on the top, there's another one, but staying on the KDE topic real quick uh, in the chat, it, says, it looks like Bala says he's having some problems with uh, KDE on from Apple on Alma 8.6. Um, okay. That might be uh, worth send, a more interactive troubleshooting either in a bug report or in the IRC channel. There is, yeah, we'll, we'll do that on the IRC. Unless there's yeah. a known issue that you wanted to share that you know is causing problems okay. right now. Uh, 8.6, uh, the kernel in 8.6 has a problem uh, with SDDM. And uh, uh, it's locking your screen. Uh, that's fixed in CentOS Stream 8. So the kernel will come out in 8.7. I've asked them, I said, please bring that kernel into 8.6 because it's affecting people. Uh, I haven't heard yes or no either way on that. That's and great but, that it's fixed, uh, though, for, uh, for Stream 8 users. And it will be fixed in the future for RHEL and RHEL rebuilds. It is, but it's sort of a pain. <laughs> it, it, it is a painful, <laughs> um, but at the same time, I get that you know they don't want to risk a regression uh, if they take it back to eight six right now when it's not affecting any rel packages. As far as I know, it's not affecting any rel packages, right? Uh, QT. Oh, it does uh, affect QT five. Yeah, uh, that's that's why it's affecting the KDE in eight point six. Um, if your program does certain things, some uh, uh, it's a threading issue. Um, gotcha. Okay. I wasn't as familiar with the specifics, but either way, it's great that it's uh, that it's fixed in Stream 8 and uh, helps highlight the value of uh, Stream 8. You can get those fixes early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another question that uh, came up is uh, uh, Maxwell suggested that uh, it's worth touching on how folks who aren't currently involved in Fedora and Apple packaging can get involved. Um, the first thing I'll say with that is that Apple packagers are Fedora packagers. It's not a separate group or anything. And so uh, getting involved in Apple means becoming a Fedora packager. There's uh, several docs that we can link to. Uh, if you Google join Fedora packagers, you'll find it probably as quick as I can find the link. 
but uh, and it might even be in our references reference section. If not, we could probably add it for the next time. I think I found it. We'll get this in the uh, reference link so that way people looking at the uh, slide deck can have it. But uh, the idea is that you can join the Fedora Packager group. And then uh, once you start maintaining packages, all you do is you, you can request Apple branches just like you'd request another Fedora branch. Um, for those that aren't familiar, usually the way it works is that you'll, when you add a new package, you'll add it in Rawhide first, and then you can just wait for it to show up in the next Fedora release. Or you can optionally go ahead and ask for it in previous stable releases or previous Apple branches. So like you could add a package to Rawhide, and then ask for an F36 and Apple 9 branch. Or you could ask for every currently supported branch or just Fedora branches. Uh, and in rare cases, uh, it's usually not common, but you can ask for Apple only packages as well, where there's no Fedora branches and all the Rawhide and all the Fedora branches get retired and dis deactivated, and you just have Apple branches on the package. Um, we're definitely looking for more contributors there. Uh, if anyone is interested in becoming a packager or has questions, um, Fedora dash devil on IRC on Libera IRC is a great place to ask those questions. I don't know if there's an equivalent on matrix yet, but there probably will be soon um, or in the future, or maybe it's just bridged correctly. I'm sure Neil will pipe in and uh, let us know if there's, if the bridging is working there as expected, but yeah, show up, ask questions. Uh, there's lots of us that are willing to help people get started and sponsor people to become packagers because it's a lot of work and we don't want to do it all ourselves. Um, for the KDE, let's let's get those ones off offline because I'm very curious about about those. Um, so ping me on in here or on the IRC Apple IRC, or send an email to me tdawson at redhat.com or the Apple Dash Devel at whatever is at the end of that. Yes, the devil mailing list is also a great place for these type of discussions. Yep. Because I, I tried to make KDE as, as good as possible. But uh, that's outside of... Anyway, anything else? I think that's everything. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for showing up. Uh, those of you who are working on Apple... Thank you very much. Uh, every little bit helps. Everything from fixing the documentation to maintaining packages uh, and everything in between. We really appreciate your work. And bye. Great. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Carl. Uh, our next talk is in uh, just four minutes. Uh, so you can head to the session for that. Um, or if you want to sit in the hallway track for four minutes, that's cool too. So I'll see you all around. Bye.